Hey, good morning. Mark with Vince Segarra Custom Shop Guitars. What's going on? Um, I've had a bunch of questions on my dry, my desiccant air dryer. So it's disassembled right now. It's got the little bucket under there. That's kind of cool, huh? Um, but anyway, it's got two 20-inch clear vessels hanging down. Um, and it's a three-stage system. So let me just climb the ladder and see if we can't talk with this thing for a second. So basically, I have a, um, a little Bosch moisture remover and filter. So it's a, it's a water trap and a filter that you can buy. Um, this is actually a pretty decent one. Um, and it, it impacts the water. I purposely have the, the tubing coming down. I want it vertical and then going back up vertical because obviously that's a water trap area and that's one of the secrets you'll see you know everybody doing so this helps collect the water down here um, basically this next stage I am coming in and I can't remember I can't get up top to see if that's in or out um, here, let me climb the ladder and we'll see so I have this coming in the in um, just Keep note that this one's turned around. It's going through the out. So basically the reason why and what we got going here is I have threaded PVC. I took a, um, a three quarter inch PVC and took a slip or glue side coupler to thread side coupler. So the other side of this is threaded and the nipple that's up in these guys was the perfect boy this is really hard to do with this thing like that um you saw my little stainless steel mesh up in here too we'll talk about that in just a second i'm gonna try to make this short and sweet but anyway this tube right here um is threaded up on that thing and i actually did put some uh, epoxy in there because i want this to be a permanent fixture okay the air is coming in from the top which is a, a hole right underneath here. I've stuffed a stainless steel Brillo pad. You can buy these from a restaurant supply type store. Um, I don't imagine something else would work, but what you're looking for is a place for the air to impact. Moist air, when it impacts, just like driving down the road on a foggy morning, the air impacts your windshield and it breaks the water away. So that's the principle that, that we're working with here. So I've got one stage of breaking it. You can actually see a water drip right there. I'm just kind of letting this dry out since I have to service the, uh, the bead side, the desiccant side. This side is nothing but impact zone. So I'm blowing the air through this one. These basically touch the side of the thing so the air has to impact through all of this steel. This is gonna give it a place to collect and it will obviously drip. Um, a perfect scenario would probably be to put a little flare down here, a little skirt, um, because this is held off the bottom. You'll see it back when I assemble it. I'll take a picture and post it at the end of this. But if the water drips straight down, it could uh, turn and go back up because the air is getting sucked up and this is held off the bottom. And I actually did not have a drain port on this vessel, but I'm working on that right now. I'm going to go ahead and install one um, because it'll help to daily drain that thing off. Anyway, the air, after it impacts here, comes back up, which obviously the water is going to have a hard time making that trip. Um, and, you know, it should fall back down. The water comes, water, the air comes through. This one is reversed, so I'm going in through the outdoor, okay? What that does is it allows the air to come down through the center instead of the outside. And I'm going down through the tube. I'm going to show you the tube in just a second when I get off the ladder. Um, it's going to come back up through all of that desiccant, right? And then I have a little stainless steel piece of mesh right here. I just cut one of these and cut a piece of it off and jammed it in the outdoor because I don't want any of these little beads to travel if they were through the airline. Makes sense? I've got an off valve here. These have the push, um, the little push button red thingy on the top both of them do so that you can relieve the pressure but i have a an on and off valve for the main air supply coming into the rig one coming out of the rig i can just shut it down bleed the air off and then i can service it okay let me get down here without breaking my neck um 
or with breaking my neck and make for good video anyway. Uh, what do we got going here? So, first thing is, this is the down tube, okay? So this one, I've seen all of these. I didn't come up with this idea. I was researching how to do this. I didn't want to spend a million bucks on a, a high-end one because um, everybody makes one. DeVilvis, all these guys make them for painters because you need them. But again, who wants to spend four or $500 on that and then the replaceable media? I didn't, didn't like that deal. The ones I've seen online, the guys are having to take the whole thing down and pour all the desiccant media out of the little in and out holes on those. And daddy ain't doing that. I'm, I'm just a hair too lazy for that. So what I came up with was this guy. This down tube, uh, let me cover this and I'll show you how to do this. This is a foot valve, plastic foot valve. You can buy them in brass. They're basically to hold water prime, you know. But I grabbed this plastic one, took it apart, took the guts out of it. There's a little O-ring, a little spring, not an O-ring, a little uh, rubber flap to keep prime on something. To keep, It's made to keep water like in a well or a pump situation to keep this thing primed. I can't do that because I am forcing air down it, which would defeat the purpose of a foot valve. Anyway. I took the guts out of it and stuffed some more of the mesh. If you can see it through that screen, I just pulled this whole thing off, stuffed the whole thing full of stainless steel because I don't want the beads going anywhere except where I put them, okay? So with this thing, friction fit, it actually doesn't friction fit, it just floats on there. I kept um, just a little O-ring gasket. This actually came off of a... Um, a water filter that goes in these cartridges. So if you have a carbon filter for your water system at home, this is what's on the end of those. So just next time you change your RO under your sink, grab one of these over there. And it basically fits up in there, allows this to push on it, and it doesn't allow any blow by. So basically what we got going on is I'm using the 20 inch clear vessels. These are water housings. They're rated up to 100 and 150, 160, something like that, PSI. I run at 100, 105 PSI, so I'm not worried about it. People talk about them blowing up. Um, I don't think so, man. And if it does, eh, it's going to be a mess, but it's, I don't think it's going to hurt anything because the air will escape pretty fast. Anyway, this guy, I've cut dead flush to the top. I don't know, camera level... But it's basically just flush, and that's what it requires on this unit. If you're making one, whatever housing you get, just check it and see, you know, what it's gonna what it's gonna take for you. So basically, what I can do is I'll tape up this hole in my pipe, right? Then I'll pour the beads in here, and I won't go any higher than my O-ring. Pretty simple. And now, if you if you tape this up and hold it in place with tape, which I'll cut, and when I fill it up, I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Um, that makes it way easier. Now you just go screw it on like it's a water filter. Boom. So that's the whole principle there. So I am going to show you that in a little bit. Um, this is the media. I sure hope this is not backwards because it's backwards on my screen, but I think it's not when you watch it. Um, it's dry and dry. I got it off of eBay. It's color changing desiccant media and it comes in orange and as it gets wet, it turns green. I should have taken a picture before I took it out because it was three quarters of the way green, <clears throat> which I haven't let it get that bad yet. Um, if you're curious, this funnel came off of a, um, a Rockler glue kit. This is for refilling glue bottles. It fits perfectly on a gallon jug, which is great. Uh, this is another jar. This is exactly what my thing holds here. So I, this is uh, five pounds. This one's a gallon and it's seven and a half pounds. So this is like three quarters of a gallon. That's what it holds. So basically that's the whole rig, man. It's easy to service and you cook this media. Ah, that's the other thing I didn't cover. You cook the media at 200 220 in the oven for two hours and I did this batch last night which um, 
Let me see if I can do it without spilling them all over because, dude, these things are a mess. See, they're nice and orange, and I'm promising you, man, the green is green. So you can sense a little hue of green in these compared to the brand spanky, spanky new ones that are super orange. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to spill them everywhere. Um, anyway, how do you bake them? First time I did it, I put them in a big old, big old uh, glass baking dish and the air doesn't flow through them. I have a convection oven, which is pretty cool. It's a perfect scenario, but the air won't flow through glass. So what the heck? And when you're pouring them in there, those things are like popcorn. They just bounce like crazy. So I had the, I had them all over the kitchen, man. I was so ticked off. So I came up with this. This is a Gentle Cycle um, branded Evercare for the ladies' uh, personables that are delicate. Okay, let's just say that. Now, it's a little zipper bag. It's made of polyester, I believe, a, a rayon or some crap like that. I did all the research, went online to find the melting point and all that. 220 is not a big deal. This one cooked in the oven for two hours last night. I shut the oven off. Uh, it was actually about two and a half hours. Shut the oven off, went to bed, left them in the oven to just let them cool down. I figured that would be the least humid place for them to suck up humidity. But anyway, I just unzip it, pour the old stuff in, zip it up. I got a Tupperware thing I carried home and cook it right in the oven, right in the kitchen. No, no odor, no harm, no foul, no nothing. My wife was really worried, but it's no big deal, I promise you. So... That's that. Let me um, put it all back together, and I'll show you what it looks like finished. And it, the the air here, is wet. I'm just gonna say that it is dangerously wet. My compressor is on the other side of the wall where this is outside. Right now it's 90 plus degrees. And the humidity outside is probably 85%. Um, the humidity in here, um, you can see right here, I've got it at 74 degrees. It's 49%. It basically stays 50% humidity in here all the time because of guitar wood. Uh, yeah, got to keep it dry. And that's, that's one of the big things. Um, so the air is wet when it comes out of the line. So basically because I keep a 70 to 75 degree shop and the compressor's out there, it's already hyperheating as it's in the cylinder and then it hyper cools as it's compressed. Okay. That's one temperature change that's, that's already causing moisture. Even if it was in this room, it would be causing moisture. There's no way you can get away from it. But coming out of that area, resting, coming into this area, which is cool, and I have the lines running. You see the red and the blue. Don't, the red is a uh, vacuum, so I'm, I'm using that for my fixturing vacuum. The whole shop is plumbed with red and blue. Everywhere you look, there's red and blue, red and blue, red and blue. So got to love the red and blue. Red, white, and blue. It's great. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's why you get moisture. There's lots of ways to get rid of it, but desiccant is the absolute ultimate answer because it ain't getting past there. The desiccant is going to absorb the moisture. The color is going to indicate when you are in trouble. So I was in trouble. Like I, I needed to paint. So I did shoot some stuff yesterday, but I was like, dude, this is getting awful questionable. But I don't, you know, I, it's not like I can see water coming out of the thing like you would if you didn't have this. But... Anyway, I just yap for 15 whole minutes. Let me shut this off. I will give you a picture of it before I'm done. Peace. All right, little time lapse photography here. And uh, one thing is you can see, you see that meridian line right there where it goes from bright, bright orange to just a little darker orange. These are the pre-baked beads and these are virgin beads that I still had in the gallon jug that you saw earlier. And it was actually that that much was in there left over from this gallon and I poured those in and they that little bit went this far so you, you only need I'm basically a half gallon will do it but this little five pound 
thing was perfect. Anyway, here's what I do. I take a little, a little plastic vitamin cup or whatever you call these things um, and just cover it up. If you don't have one of these, I just tape that tube. You don't want beads going in that tube and you want it to stay in the center because obviously it's hard to move once you, you can't move it. So if it's not in the center, you're going to have to dump it and try it again. So anyway, that's the deal. So now it's just about taking the tape off, taking the cup off, and making sure that there's no beads on that O-ring, obviously, and put the thing back on. And I'll show you that in a second. All right, y'all. A little noisy because of compressor, but um, basically... I just turned the compressor on. I've got the media stack back loaded. Okay, so both of these vessels are loaded up. You just heard that stop. Now, that guy has a like a low pressure release. It's got a spring on there, so when it's at low pressures or just starting up, it'll go ahead and blow the what water that's sitting in there out. And I've got that tube going outside, which is kind of cool. I decided not to put my drain on here because I need the compressor today and if I screw it up and over drill or trying to tap this, if it cracks it, I will be shut down. I have another one of these um, at my house so I will practice on scrap, or it's not really scrap, but um, alright this guy is loading up and you can see it. the air actually gets foggy, you see that? It literally is that wet. Here it is. So, anyway, that's that's my story, and I'm telling you, man, it works like a champ. And I got a bunch of people that are like, "Hey, man, you want to make these and sell them?" And I'm, hmm, I can get you the stuff, but it's kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> to do. So. I wouldn't mind it, but, you know, hey, I got guitars to build, so that's that's what I'm working with. All right, I uh, can't turn it around to say goodbye, so I'll say goodbye this way. See ya.